Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, October 6th, 5.49 a.m. Central Time as I speak here. December corn futures down three at 6.81. November soybeans down 11 and a half at 13.58 and a quarter. December Chicago wheat down nine and a half at 8.92 and a half. December Kansas City wheat down eight and a quarter at 9.82. December spring wheat down one at 9.80 and a half. If you guys are listening on the podcast, appreciate it. As always, leave me a rating, leave me a review on that Apple podcast app. Could always use some more uh, reviews there. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure you hit the like button. Leave me a comment. If you've got yield updates, uh, crop updates, if you've got a basis update, if this river situation has impacted your basis, uh, drop it in the comments. All of those comments will help YouTube to help me to grow this channel. If you guys would like some additional information from me, visit my website, www www.standardgrain.com. Check out my premium subscription service today, guys. I send my premium subscribers a ton of information direct from me every single business day. Morning email goes out about 5.30 a.m. Central Time. In that email, you'll see every overnight headline you need to be aware of. Charts, graphics, weather information, lots of weather maps, uh, all of my grain marketing recommendations. My daily subscriber-only videos are part of this deal. Yesterday, I talked about Chinese purchases of U.S. corn and soybeans. Uh, China's been kind of missing in action to some extent. I discussed that. I discussed some of the potential implications. I had a whole bunch of good charts. If you guys are interested in this sort of content, sign up today. 50 bucks a month, guys. Cancel at any time. No other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else, I promise. Uh, that leads me into my first story here. So Chinese uh, soybean imports have been soft recently. Reuters reports this morning citing a few different sources that China soybean imports during the month of October will fall to their lowest level since March of 2020, which is like, you know, the onset of COVID. That was a bad time frame. One trader said this, crush margins have been in negative territory for several months, which is resulting in lower imports. Another analyst said that some factories have had to shut down operations, others working below capacity. Uh, feed makers in China have been reducing soybean meal and hog feed down to like 20% from uh, 30%, which would be more normal. So China's got some economic problems. Um, they're also perhaps waiting to see just how big this Brazilian crop will be. Brazilian farmers in the process of planting record acreage, they could very well harvest a monster crop. They need weather to cooperate, of course. Uh, we haven't seen the big flash sales of soybeans to China uh, this year, this you know during these last few weeks, like you would often see. And I would probably argue that the weekly sales to China have been poor uh, relative to other years. You know, we sold a million metric tons last week, which uh, is not a good number seasonally. I mean, that sounds like a good number, but this time of year we should be selling a million and a half, two million, two and a half, and we're just not. Uh, we're not looking for a great number today either. China did buy a whole bunch of beans uh, out of the U.S. for new crop delivery back in the spring or summer. So we've still got a decent looking book of sales to China. It's just that they haven't been around uh, lately uh, in the way that they would normally be. OPEC will cut uh, oil output by 2 million barrels per day. The cut will take effect in November. It should run until the end of 2023. OPEC, of course, wants high, higher uh, oil prices. They're concerned about a slowing global economy. That negative oil price situation that occurred in 2020 is something that they uh, remember very well and don't want repeated. Nigeria said they'd like to see prices around $90 per barrel, and we're getting pretty close. In a statement, uh, the White House isn't happy about this. Uh, Biden said this in a, in a statement, according to the White House. Disappointed, He's disappointed by the short-sighted decision by OPEC to cut production quotas while the global economy is dealing with continued negative impacts from Putin's invasion of Ukraine. The White House also said this, and maybe this is more important, in light of today's action, the Biden administration will also consult with Congress on additional tools and authorities to reduce OPEC's control over energy prices. Uh, some reports suggest that this uh, bill called the NOPEC bill is back on the table. This deal passed the Senate, uh, a Senate committee back in May. It's not been signed into law, but if it were signed into law, this bill could expose OPEC countries to lawsuits, antitrust issues, for uh, essentially orchestrating artificial price movement in the oil markets. So um, there's a lot going on here. But in any case, your uh, nearby crude oil contracts, your WTI, they're trading 88 bucks this morning ballpark. They bottomed at 76 in late September. According to AAA, your national average gas price rose to 387 yesterday after bottoming at 365 in late September. So big recovery in crude oil, big recovery in uh, gas prices. Um, spike 20 cents from their low just a couple weeks ago. 
Ukrainian forces continue to advance into Russia's annexed territories. Several reports indicate that Ukraine is recapturing some of the territory that Putin now claims as his own. This all sounds great. You know, Putin is bad, right? But uh, some people would argue, and, and probably myself included, that the risk of a nuclear exchange grows as Ukraine pushes into these uh, Russian, and I'll put Russian in quotes, territories. Again, I, I kind of feel like this prospect of a nuclear exchange has gone unreported, underreported, underemphasized by the U.S. media, the Western media. I feel like this should be the biggest story in the news every day, and it's not. Uh, the fact that Putin is openly discussing his nuclear capabilities, the possibility of an exchange, it should be it should be big news, and it's not. Uh, here's a larger version of this map from Axios, and you know these uh, like reddish, uh, orangish regions here. This is these are the territories that Putin has. Uh, annexed or occupied. And this is where um, Ukraine is making some progress. And there's some overlap there. And that's scary because Putin has said he's going to defend these territories as his own, right? So, and, and by any means necessary. So does that mean a nuclear exchange is possible? Uh, I don't know, but the prospect is absolutely terrifying, has a million implications. U.S. ethanol production improved just slightly last week, still really not very good, 889,000 barrels per day. That was up 4% on the week, but down 9% versus the same week last year, lowest seasonal print for ethanol production since 2013. Uh, you'll see ethanol production start to improve here in the coming weeks as harvest corn deliveries hit these ethanol plants. Um, gasoline demand on average over the last four weeks, about 6% below the same period last year. Fed officials are sticking to their guns in regard to rate hikes. San Francisco Fed Chief Mary Daly and Atlanta Fed Chief Bostic both said this week that the Fed will need to keep tightening in place in order to reduce inflation, of course. Financial markets, however, are somewhat uh, discounting the prospect of rate cuts, uh, maybe one in 2023 and more in 2024. Uh, they're pricing in you know, you know, the prospect of additional hikes before then, but then maybe cuts in uh, late 23 uh, into 24. A good deal of that, of course, hinges on on forthcoming inflation data. And this is like the biggest deal when it comes to financial markets. I mean, this Fed thing is like the biggest deal on the planet, the way that it seems. We've got a weekly export sales report that will be out this morning at 7.30 a.m. Central. Corn sales expected 350 to 800. Soybean sales 500 to 1.2 expected. That's not a good uh, expectation. We should be doing better with beans. Wheat sales expected 200 to 450. Uh, the cattle market was higher yesterday, a little bit of a recovery effort, live cattle up like 40 to 60 cents, feeder cattle up uh, almost $2 in some of these contracts. There was some light cash trade reported, I think most of it at 145 yesterday. U.S. dollars higher, stock markets lower, the S&P is down 27, the Dow's down about 200, bonds are flat, uh, crude oil now down 50 cents at 87.25 last in the November WTI. Have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you Friday.